Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Curette scalers are spoon-shaped instruments with their peripheral edges sharpened to facilitate deep scaling. In cross-section, the curette is shaped as a half circle. The lateral sides converge with the face of the instrument to form two cutting edges. You will notice the difference from the scaling instruments here is that the undersurface of the curette is rounded. The cutting edges also form a rounded end of the instrument as opposed to the pointed tip of the scaling instruments. The curette scaling instruments have three specific uses. First is the removal of subgingival deposits. Second is the smoothing of the root surface, which is also termed root planing. And thirdly, the removal of soft tissue, or a procedure called gingival curettage, and this is done by periodontists. The curettes in your kit were designed by Dr. Gracie. Their small size and design facilitates their use in deep, narrow pockets. The scaling instrument the G1 and 2 has two cutting edges. These edges, as you will notice, are not in the same plane. As the tip is pointing toward you, you can see that the lower edge closest to my hand or farthest from the handle is the working end to be used against hard tissue. The blade opposite is in a higher plane and is the edge to be used against the gingival soft tissue lining for gingival curettage. We will only be using the lower or inner concave blade of this instrument. The first instrument that we'll talk about in the Gracie set is the G1 and 2. This instrument is double-ended. It has a straight shank. It is paired and it is designed for use on the labial, lingual, and proximal surfaces of anterior teeth. Moving to the type of knot, the first step we will consider is the location of the inner concave surface blade of this instrument. It is farthest from the handle. We'll adapt it on the lower anterior teeth, beginning the stroke on the mid-labial surface, and proceeding to the proximal. Notice that this straight shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Notice also that the end of this instrument is rounded and allows for the extension of this instrument into the sulcular area. Instruments are never to be forced into a pocket, but only placed there when tissue permits. Again, remember that the Downstroke is an explore and placing the instrument beneath or apical to the deposit and the working stroke is the upward pull stroke. Now we will look at the posterior Gracie curettes and in comparison you can see that the ends of the posterior curettes 
are similar in angulation or contra-angling to the Cowhorn Explorer and also to the modified sickle that you saw in a previous tape. This angulation is similar from the last bend in the shank of the Gracie Curette. There are several bends in the shank of the Gracie Curette to allow for easy access in deep scaling procedures. The same guideline holds true for placement is that the undersurface of the instrument is down to the tissue when the tip of the instrument is pointed into the interproximal area. The instrument I have out here now is the G1112. It is a double-ended, contra-angled, and paired instrument. It is designed for use on the mesial surfaces of posterior teeth. On the lower arch, the 11 side of the GE1112 is designed for use on the mesials entering on the lower right buckle and is designed for the mesial surfaces entering on the lower left lingual. The G11 can also be used in the maxillary arch on the upper left buccal surfaces and on the upper right lingual surfaces. To show the adaptation with the G11, we will use it on the mesial surfaces of the upper left side. Again, the holding the instrument pointed into the proximal surface, you will see that the shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth and the undersurface is down to the tissue. Note here that the instrument can be taken very deeply into the pocket. And the bends in the shank allow for this movement. The G12 will now be adapted on the upper right buckle surfaces. As a guideline in initial use of this instrument, do not allow the bends in the shank to confuse you. Concentrate on the working end from the last bend in the shank down to the rounded tip of the instrument. And you will be able to see the likeness to your sickle scalers and the Cowhorn Explorer. Now we'll move to the next instrument in our kit, the G1314. This instrument is designed to be used on the distal surfaces of posterior teeth. We'll notice that the contra-angling is the same as in the 1112, the modified sickle, and the cowhorn explorer. The location of the inner concave blade is what distinguishes the 1112 from the 1314. I will be using the 13 on the lower left lingual surfaces. Adapting the entire length of the blade, initiating my stroke on the midlingual surface, proceeding to the proximal. Now 
Remember that it's a down explore, up working stroke. Going in to place the blade beneath or apical to the deposit and coming up in a working stroke. Returning to the typodont, show the adaptation of the number 14 end of this posterior Gracie curette, adapting the entire length of the cutting edge against the tooth surface and moving into the proximal. Again, note that in this area, your movement is confined and your finger rest cannot possibly be on the third molar. Again, concentrate on the movement of the instrument from the last bend in the shank. And note that it can be moved into the sulcular area. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.